right, so tell me when you're ready, love. Did I not push play? Oh, I didn't push play. I'm glad I looked up. Jeez, man. Or maybe I'm out of data on this camera. Yeah, I might need to delete some stuff. Let's use yours. <laughs> I don't think it's going to let me. Okay. Yeah, don't get up. I'll grab it. I mean, I can use mine, but it's not as good quality as yours is going to be my other one. Yeah, I'm thinking that I'm definitely, when, I mean, that I'm definitely out of. How was the drive, you guys? Was it bad or? No, just like, I live in West Hollywood, so. Oh, you're not, oh, West Hollywood's not that far then for you. Like well, really? Yeah. Oh, no. So, well, West Hollywood, <clears throat> I feel as, oh, shoot, I don't know your past. Five, two, three, three. <laughs> okay. five, two, three, three, three. I feel like West Hollywood is closer than some of the other areas, right? Like, what? like um, for instance, I did Jubilee recently. That was like Calabasas. Yeah, I don't know that I like. Calabasas? Mm -hmm. No, Calabasas is like where, where the Kardashian. Where, where, that's exactly where we filmed. Far as hell. To me, that was far. West Hollywood, I dated a guy down there. It wasn't, to me, I didn't think it was that far, but I guess it can be with. Traffic and stuff. Okay, great. Uh, we are ready to go? Yep. We're live. Yay! Um, so last last but certainly not least, how do you say your name, beautiful? Okay, so everyone okay. calls me L. L, okay. So okay. Pretty, pretty L. Letal. 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 Yeah. What is that? It's an Israeli name. Really? Um, okay. Letal. Yeah. It means like uh, like the water on the leaves after the rain. That's what my mom told me, but I don't know if that's true or not. I love that. You're like, I'm going to believe it. Yeah. Natal. <clears throat> I'm going to try to call you that. If I slip up, I'm going to say L. Okay. So um, these are super cute. You look warm. Thank so you. thanks so much for coming and yeah, <clears throat> being on the show. Yes. Yeah, so we like to start off the show doing something just a little bit different, kind of true to my form okay. and my content, um, get deep into intimacy. So we're going to do a little exercise and it works with men and women, women and women, so it doesn't matter. But don't be scared. It's nothing crazy. I'm so scared. You're scared. Okay, okay. so I'll just have you face me. Okay. You look super warm. Okay. And, um, oh, you have all the bling on. So what we're going to do is I'm going to put my hand right here in your heart, and you're going to do the same. So come a little closer so that our hands, okay. yeah, like that. Good. And then put this hand over mine like that. Good. And now close your eyes. And I'm just going to guide us through a few breaths together. So I'll take a deep inhale. Exhale. Again, breath in. Good, last one. And then just a few moments of breathing, just natural. You did good. <laughs> and you were nervous, right? I tried. Okay, so how is that for you? Have you ever done anything like that? Uh, yeah, I think You so. have? It's okay. Like, I get a lot of massages. Okay. So, like, sometimes... So they do, like, they do stuff like that in your massages? So, so sometimes... <clears throat> Sorry. <clears throat> oh, you're good. Oh, there's some water right here. Grab her a bottle. Perfect. Um, no, you're good. No, you just uh, got a little choked up. <laughs> So, like, there's different kinds of massage places, but sometimes the people are, like, super spiritual. Really? I guess like you're in L.A. Like, yeah, in L.A. They're, like, into all these Reiki schmiki. Okay. Sure yeah, I am a Reiki to, master. I don't even mean to disrespect. <laughs> no, I not at all. what it means. Not at all. But, like, when they're into that, the rocks and stuff, they do the greetings, so then they do because... the little bell. Okay. Yeah. Wow. So, you've done that. Okay. Yeah. Cool. So, we just do it because anytime you're syncing the breathing together and you're connecting at the heart, it just creates more of an intimate... Uh, connection so then when we're talking we're going to be able to be more connected and intimate okay. typically we're going to do that longer but we don't want people just it's working wa watching I yeah feel it already. yeah see yeah. see with women it's easy too because women are in the feminine they're in that flow of nature 
So stuff like this is like in their wheelhouses yeah. where guys are more like up here in their heads. So when you do that, they're like, what's happening? You're touching me. <laughs> that, type, that type of thing. Yeah. So, okay. Tell me about yourself. I'm so curious what you do about your work. Just, yeah, just, okay, so, just brag on yourself a little. Okay. Um, so I, well, I'm from New York. So okay. I'll just start there. Okay. I'm like a jack of all trades kind of. Okay. Kind of so I'm from New York. I moved here 12 years ago. I um, thought I was going to be on television, but somehow, you know, everyone thinks that when they move to L.A. And then um, I was trying to do that for the first few years, and then I somehow got into the cannabis industry. A lot of people did this, I feel like. Yeah. So I was doing that. I actually did really well in that. And then um, I had a Airbnb that was, um, like, cannabis themed, so I would leave them, like, a joint. Or I would let them like smoke it in. It was kind of like themed like a cat. Wow, fascinating. I've never heard about that. I've never heard that before. Yeah. Okay. And um, hmm. then COVID hit and then I had a baby. And so I didn't work for a little while. Okay. So what is a crypto themed so, Airbnb? So curious. Okay. So in 2017, when I was working in the cannabis industry, yes. I met this young kid who was like really successful. And I asked him like, what are, what do you do? He was like 17, you know? So he... I know told me about Bitcoin, mm -hmm. um, and he was like, download this app, Coinbase, like, buy Bitcoin, mm -hmm. buy Ethereum, and I'm kind of like, I'm just down for whatever, so yeah. I'm like, fuck it, I'm just, all right, and then it was like going up, 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 so I just kept buying, 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 and then it just like crashed, mm -hmm. and I never sold it. So, you just kept it. So I just kept it, so then in 2020, like, crypto, like, blew up, so I had money that was just sitting there for years, and I took that, and I bought the house. And then I just thought it was fitting to just kind of like deck it out with crypto themed wallpaper because like, I, do you know what an NFT is? Yeah, I slightly understand, but not fully. So um, like when the crypto boom in 2020 happened, uh -huh. like they were selling um, art collections, like digital art for like really a lot of money. And it was okay. kind of like a status thing. So it's like if you had this art from this collection you know it's worth three hundred thousand dollars for one like it just shows that you know you're kind of it's like for clout or okay. like you get like invited to these parties so they had like the board ape yacht club so they'd have like yacht parties so they if you had an ape which was like anywhere from like 50 to like five hundred thousand, then you'd get invited to this party and all the people who have the apes are invited to this party so it's kind of like hmm. i didn't have any nfts but i just i the NFT is the art? Yeah, but it, 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 it's a lot of things. It's um, it's art. It's It could even be like a receipt to something. There is um, like, you know, the the metaverse. Mm -hmm. So you can buy like Mayor. clothes and NFT. Like NFT can be like a, it's just a non-fungible token. It's just something that, um, I'm not really a crypto expert. But, yeah. But people, are, like, there's other ways to I know to people use geek it. out on this, like, yeah. insane. Yeah. yeah. There's other okay. ways to use it besides art. So basically, I was just like, I want to just, like, put wallpaper all over the house of, like, each, just theme each room different, uh, like, crypto theme. Uh -huh. So we had, like, all the expenses, ex expensive NFTs. We, like, had them printed and put all over the walls. And it was really cool for a while, um, except the neighbors hated me. And, um, Why did they hate you? They couldn't see on the inside. No, because it was like getting busy, so it was loud. Oh, because people, people were that, in the Airbnb like, were coming in and out? Yeah. So the neighbors were like just giving me hell. And um, then like crypto crashed, so I just sold it. You just sold the house? Yeah. And now I kind of want to go into podcasting. Okay. Yeah, okay. I'm thinking that's okay. what I want to do. Okay. So you're but, just like playing with your options? Yeah, I kind of jump around. Yeah. Like, so you're yeah. really an entrepreneur. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. All right. Yeah. It's an interesting concept. I've never heard of it before. Yeah, I've it themed went, Airbnb. Yeah, it went it's, viral, actually. Really? Yeah, yeah. It wow. Was, it was on a lot of, like, it because we listed it on Zillow, and then once it hit Zillow, it, like, it went crazy. It was, like, in all these, like, publications and stuff. So, really? Yeah, so so did you have a hard time selling the house or no? Um. Because of all the crypto theme? 
I think it was the crypto theme. I think it's also the interest rates were high, so it yeah. did take longer to sell to than sell I it. wanted it to. Mm-hmm. But, I mean, it I'm sure some it. YouTuber bought it, right? No, I, you know what? Not a YouTuber, just like a family bought it, and they loved they loved it. I didn't really? meet them. I didn't even meet them because I was in New York. It's so time. random. Yeah. It's like okay. Yeah. Hey, they, we don't knock it. Whatever. You know who my real estate agent was? No. Um, you ever seen uh, like million dollar listing? I've heard I, Altman. I've heard of it, but I haven't watched any of the real estate stuff. One of the they, one of the okay. Of the so they on the okay show, cool. They, yeah. They sold it for you. Okay. Yeah. So now you're just like pivoting. You're in a transitional yeah. time of your life. Okay. Yeah. So when you think of like the theme, um, like of the show and my work, intimacy. That word, like, what does intimacy mean to you? What does intimacy mean to me? I think intimacy means trust. Okay. Yeah. I like that. Yeah, yeah I haven't heard that um, before. Um, so that's a, an interesting concept. Now, what, um, or definition rather, what role has intimacy played, like, in your life over the years? What role has it played? Yeah. Is um, this, like, an important part of your life? Is this something, like, that you experience, like, had a role models experience this or demonstrate this for you as a child or no okay no one's demonstrating anything for me as a child I had to okay. learn everything myself um I don't know like it's kind of like iffy because I won't say I had like the best experiences always you know I might have had like two guys that were like good in bed okay I, like you know okay out of, okay, and so what? And that was my next question. Like, what's your relationship status currently? You, I'm single. You're single. Okay. I think I'm single because I want to be single. Okay. No, I don't want to be single, but it's just my experiences have made me feel like maybe I should just stay single. Okay, like, like, give me an example with like, as much as you want to share. I think um, men mistreat women a lot, hmm. and it's hard to find a man who won't. You know, so I feel like for me personally at this age, it's hard for me to like even trust the man to even get there with him. Like, okay. To to even have him touch me. Oh, okay. Oh, wow. Yeah. So when you say mistreat, give me an example. Cause I think today in dating, it's, it's so different than I'm not, I'm not sure your age, but it, it's so different than it was even 20 years ago. Like it's, it's totally completely changed. Um, and I saw just a st- stat recently, like um, eighty percent of people find their spouses on a dating app now, which is apps. is interesting, right? Yeah, yeah a lot of people say that, but it seems like people are still, you know, getting married and stuff like that yeah. uh, through these apps. Which is it's. I think you have to want to. You okay. Know what I mean, like I've downloaded dating apps, and I'm just like, Ugh, this is like this. Is what brutal. is it? What is it about it that's like, uh, for you? What uh, do you just feel? Like the angst? sifting, sifting, and then just like just weird questions that you get like send me a selfie right now like bro no send me a selfie yeah, right now like no or i like, don't want to and yeah. like who are you and then it's like you know they can look one way and then you meet them and then they have like they're just like strange or something like i don't they're know different different never stuff really like i've never had success in a dating app but maybe i've never had really like real success with men in general okay why do you why do you think that is i'm so curious um i would say from what I hear is that I'm like, I have a strong personality. Is this feedback from past, from exes yeah. and things? Okay. So I had like one good guy in my life, which I fucked up on my own. Okay. Which I regret. Okay. You know, but can't do anything about it now. But besides him, like, I think it's just, I don't really want a man who's not as smart as me to tell me what to do. You can only tell me what to do if I think you're smarter than me. Mm. So I'm not going to let you lead me if you're blind. You know oh, I mean? yeah. Well, that, I mean, that's, I think that makes sense though. Yeah. I mean, so I think that that's a good, um, a good frame of reference in the fact that you're, you're not saying you're obviously an entrepreneur, you made your own money. You're not saying you're not going to let a man lead you. I would you're love saying, a man to lead me. Okay, I good. I would love a man to lead wow. me, but I haven't found one that can. Mm. You know what I mean? Yeah. Now let's dive deep into that. Cause I feel like this is a plight that a lot of women have. Well, a lot of women say they won't let a man even lead them. But for you, interestingly enough, even though you're successful, you're saying, yes, I would. So you want to be would. feminine. I, want, I mean, I've heard I'm not the most feminine. And I would love to be, like, as feminine as I could be. You know yes, I, mean? like, I understand. I see other women 
who are way more feminine than me. Like, it's just natural to them. But I've had a hard life, so... It's Sometimes just, you get callous when, yeah. when you go through things. And you're very mean, successful. Right. And most entrepreneurs or women who are super successful be are, like, you know... They're really profound in their masculine energy because they're successful in business. Yeah. And women who tend to be a little more feminine and like more flighty, they're not as good in business because they're really more in the feminine energy, right? right. So it makes sense. Yeah. Um, so when you like talk about, like you said, like I just haven't found a man that. Yeah, I haven't found like a man that was like, I think I honestly blame myself. Because mm. I don't blame my, I like sort of blame myself because I feel like I've been attracted to the wrong type of guy. But I think it all stems from like how you were raised, you know. So if your mom didn't sit with you and talk to you, or if, you, if your dad didn't like beat up your boyfriends when you were younger, then how the hell are you supposed to know, right? You're just gonna go after like shallow things like yeah. money or looks, and those usually don't end up well. So I think that just because of being misguided, I've just went after things from like what it looks like versus what it is. What it is. You know? I love that you take ownership. A lot of women will say, oh yeah, men are this, men are that, but they don't take ownership for maybe their part in having these types of men in their lives. And it's very admirable of you to, to admit that. Like, yeah, I want to be more feminine. I am in the masculine sometimes or I'm more masculine than I'd prefer to be right. and that I I haven't had great luck with men but a lo but a lot of it was my fault and that's really um it's very advantageous very vulnerable of you to do that um and that's very feminine that's yeah. a feminine trait so you're well on your way oh, but a lot you. of modern women today will die by that sword that men are and that it's all their they fault are assholes, though. a little bit you know I, I mean I can agree with you in some in some respects that not all, not all. But I do feel like, I, let's ask this this question. Do you feel like men are assholes because um, of what women are expecting from them or because how women are treating them? I think they have too many options. Okay. Yeah. yeah I think they have too many options. So they're not really taking their time to care because like, oh, if you don't want to do it, then she will. And then she will. So I think. And then she will, right? Yeah. And yeah. I, I feel like women need to be more, like women need to close their legs more. I was just going to say, what's the solution to men? Men, we know it's true. Men are, um, you know, it's like 20, 20 women to one yeah. men, you know, in some, in some states, I think it's more like 16, 17 in Atlanta to one. Um, the ratio to women to and men. And half the guys are gay. So really it's even more. It's even more. Yeah. Correct. Because half the guys are gay publicly or privately. They are not admitting, right? I mean, we, either way. Either right? way, they're still gay. So the pool of eligible bachelors that have all the traits that women want, being tall, you know, I, we say the sixes, make over six feet, making over six figures, six pack, meaning not overweight, six inches or more, right? And then a six inch wall, a little, you know, like six figures in the bank, right? All these things. Right. That pool is so small, but all the women want them. Yeah, I don't so, think I want that anymore. What is it that you're looking for in the men? So I think I used to want that. Okay. And after being with that, I'm just like, oh, this is not going to work. So what did you find out? So you, so you dated someone in the one percent yeah. in that in that category or ten percent? Like or... I mean, I've dated people that have a lot of those qualities. Okay. So not all, not all of them. But like had some of those predominant yeah. sixes in yeah. their frames. Yeah. So then. What do you feel you learn from that and why is that deterring you from? So I feel like when you have those men, like I said, they have a lot of options, right? So they don't really treat you like you're important, like as important as maybe another man who doesn't have as many options would treat okay. you. And me, who even, like, I don't want a man who's always, like, getting all, all that attention. Okay. It's just, like, a so lot. So looks and stature are not what not as important to you. What I is mean, more important to you I in a relationship? I want to be attracted to you. Yes. I can't just be like, looks are not important. Because, okay. I mean, you could be, like, the best guy, but if I'm not, like, aroused by and you. And you want to be able to want to f*** your man, essentially. Right. Like, that's I haven't met one guy. I w one guy I want to f*** like, ever. Re right now. Like really? In the past, since my kid, I haven't met one guy. I'm like, I would fuck you, except for like Andrew Tate, but that's it. yeah. But <laughs> right, Sterling was just on the show. His best friend was just here, but um. So, 
so you look, so Andrew Tate, you like that. Now, is it his physique or just his energy? No, his, I, I like his intelligence, but I don't think we would get along. You know what I'm saying? In Why? What do you think Andrew Tate would say to you if you guys were in a relationship? You know? Would he like, say you're I being think, too bossy? No, no. He, I just think he would disrespect me. Like, you know? Okay. I feel like he, he's like my, like, twin flame. Almost. Like, that's what I would want to be if I was a guy. Like him. Okay. But I don't think that would work for me in a relationship because it's like, I'm not going to get bossed around by you. How do you want to be treated in a relationship? You're a very successful woman. Um, are you, are you open about your, your family and things? Do you tell the public? So you have a child. Yeah, I have a child. Okay. Two years, two and a half years old. Unfortunately, he didn't work with the dad because he was like full of himself. You know what I mean? So just, he, he was like in the six, 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 six yeah, category, the, the sixth club. Yeah. And it's, it's like, bro, it's like too much. You know what I mean? Like too many women that wanted him and he, it's exhausting. It's right. Exhausting. Yeah. He didn't respect me, mm-hmm. you know? And it's just like, we go outside and he's just getting complimented all day. Like I, it goes to their head. Yeah. You know? I do. I, I understand that. Yeah. Like when they're tall too, very I'm cool. a last two or six, eight, six, five. So it's like they get yeah, more energy seven, yeah. than, than you do. And you're like, dude, I thought I was the bride's here. Yeah. Apparently not. <laughs> yeah. yeah. It's crazy. I feel like when men get a lot of attention if they're in that category. Yeah, they do. If they're really tall like that, they yeah. get like play for days. Yeah. For men too. Men are like, like hey, what, what team oh, do you play for, man? Yes. Yes. What All the time. What team do you play for? Yeah. Men. I've yes. seen it. So I knew... With me there, I'm like, okay, if this is happening with me right there, yes. grown men, then I know for sure when I'm not here, this is happening all the time with women. When we went out to eat one time, he said that some girl slipped him a number in the bathroom or something. Oh, yeah. I'm like, what? Mm-hmm. Like, I never really experienced that. Like, I never had a guy, like, super, he was, like, super good looking. Yeah. Which I don't ever want again. Yeah. So you're, like, <laughs> like done just, with that. I just don't want that. I want, like, a guy who, like, loves me. You know what I mean? I just mm. want a guy who, like, really loves me. Like, there's not like, oh, if you don't do this, then fuck you. I'm going to find someone else. Like, no, they don't want anyone else. They just want me, you know? And so with that being said, and I, I love that because I, I feel like you want love. You're not, you're, you're successful. You'll be successful again. You've found the formula for making money, making success. So right. you'll do it again. Right. So I don't feel like you're looking for that necessarily. No, no. Like, I'm sure you don't want a deadbeat who's no, like living at home, but you're not like, Hey, I, mean, I need someone to pay my bills. I mean, I would, I would like someone That'd be nice. to meet me halfway. Correct. Not to pay my bills, but if we were like to together. To me, together. So I feel like the next guy, if I want to be with him, I want to marry him. Like, I okay. don't even want to just date you. Like, if we're going to go there, like. You're like, are we in this yeah. for the what long run? Now, will you tell him that? Like when you first meet him? Like the first time I meet him? Yeah. I mean, I don't know. I mean, why wouldn't you? Yeah, I guess I would tell okay. him like I'm on like a more serious path. Well, I would be more because we talked about this with Matt just like on the last show. Like, I would be more specific. I would say because a lot of women are afraid to do this, but I think the more vulnerable you are, the more the man will respect you or he'll move. Right. Right. So, okay, for instance, say. You're, I'll, we'll just play like you're the man, I'm the woman, right? Okay. So we'll role play here. So I'm going to tell you, hey, hey, thanks for picking this restaurant. I love it. It's great. Your, your biceps are like, I'm, I'm digging it, you know, or whatever. Compliment him on something. Your intelligence, I'm loving. You read a lot. I can tell you. Compliment him something. Build a little rapport, da, da, da. And then I'm going to say, hey, so what is it that you're looking for in a relationship? And you ask him first. And they're like, oh, we're going to talk about this first, you know? Mm-hmm. And then you're going to say, yeah, yeah. And so he might say, he probably is not going to tell you the truth because most guys, no one tells the truth on a first day. Right. He's going to say, well, I'm looking, he's going to say whatever you want to hear because he wants to take you back to his place probably, right? right? And then you're just going to say, okay, well, I, thanks for sharing with me. I, I love that you're honest with me, even if it wasn't, right? And then you're going to say, well, I, I'm going to tell you what I'm looking for, right? And then he's going to be shocked because most women don't do that. And then you're going to tell him, hey, you know, this is what I'm looking for. Um, I've made, I've had some success in my life. You know, I have a child. I would tell him right away. So he's open yeah, and I honest. I think I hide that. And then I would just say, I'm looking for a partner that leads to marriage. And I'm looking for it in the time frame of six months or whatever it is you're looking for. Now, what's going to happen is one or two things. And I'm going to say, and I don't need you to take care of me, but of course I would love us to build something together, right? right. First of all, Probably 99% of the men in LA are going to be like, check, 
please, right? right? right. But you want that anyway, right? Yeah. You don't want to waste your time. Right. Especially, are you in your 30s? Or Yeah. Yeah, I, I thought you were. So you're in your 30s. You don't have time to waste, right? right? So a lot of women won't say it because they're like, if I say it, it's going to scare the guy off. But it's, it, that's a good thing. Because if you scare the guy off that didn't want what you wanted, then you're winning. Right. Correct? Yeah. So then if you tell, finally you get to a guy that he says, damn, I'm looking for that too. I'm tired of dating these, you know, three or fours or these, you know, Hollywood models and actresses. I'm ready for the real deal. You're ready for it too. I don't think they're out here though. Maybe they're not. Well, you never know though. Maybe they're not in LA. I don't know. LA is a little scary when it comes to that. But the whole point is being more vulnerable is going to weed out the ones that you don't want to waste your time on anyway. You know what? I haven't met one person I even want to go out to eat with. Like, I'm, I'm serious. I don't know. I'm just like, I'm repulsed by men. Well, your hormone, like you're what, two and a half, you're almost three years out. You're, you know, birth is, is crazy. It trips your hormones out. Um, I don't know if you had postpartum or any of that stuff or you felt any type of way or you just felt normal after birth. I sure as hell did not. I had postpartum. Yeah. Um, my hormones shifted. My, my stuff changed um, on how, what I was willing to look for in a man, what I was willing to accept and things. So I think a lot of women don't talk so much about like what happens after you get birth. Did you feel like that too? Yeah. Like you were repulsed by men? Well, at the time I was, for me, I, I didn't have support. So I wanted someone in my life to help. And so I was dating someone, but I wasn't happy with the arrangement. And even though he was very honest with me, cause he was polyamorous, right? Like he had a, a, a his, his son's mother that he was not seeing actively, but he said, he I do up front mm -hmm. and at the time, but our values were so aligned when it came to health and he was tantric and the sexual practice and things that were important to me. I was like, just like, okay with that at the time, because I was like, I wanted support because my son was young and I just needed that. You know how hard it is when they're baby. Yeah. But as he got older around the age you were now, I was like, I'm not down with this anymore. And even though I did care for him, I broke things off. And then I dated someone that, that was in the public eye and a lot 30 years older than me for about um, a year. Oh. And um, he's in the personal development world. And then after that, I, um, after we split, unfortunately, because I wanted to have more kids and he didn't, again, not a value alignment, right? So we should have had that question early on. But the year of my life I spent with him was the best year of my life because I learned about business, NLP, all the things that I'm using today. And he was more like a business mentor and then more of like a sexual partner, if that makes sense. But to answer your question, yeah, I did come to that point where I was like, no, I'm not interested. And I cut him off. And to this day, even though like I talk to him and stuff and he'll bring over food now and then I don't feel like it's like it's done now. Like that energy has shifted. Right. And so I think for women after childbirth, we go through so many changes hormonally and we take on different role as being a nurturer and caregiver. And like, we're literally sustaining life when we're nursing. For sure. It changes you. It does. Yeah. And yeah, it does. It changes you and how you perceive men. Sure. And what you're looking for in a man, right? Sure. Yeah. So with all those things being said, and thanks for being so vulnerable. I love this. Um, what is it that you want to bring to the table as like a partner to a man who's just going to love you and, and not like, what, it, what are you bringing? Cause I think a lot of women sometimes forget this part, not saying that you are, no, but like, yeah, I'm just, um, I think I'm like a genuine person. Like I'm a good person and I can like, I know what men want, even though, like, I'm a little, on the, I'm not the most feminine. I feel like just being around men and, like, being with men, you kind of realize what they want, which I feel like is a woman who loves them, food, a clean house, and just, like, you know, support. You mm -hmm. know, like, not talking down to them Peace. all the time. Yeah. You know, just mm -hmm. making them feel good, which I'm not saying that I'm perfect. You know, and that, I'm, no one I'm is. Sure I've, We're women. I've said a lot of things, <laughs> yeah. you know, but if I found the right man, I don't, I don't want to disrespect him. You know what I mean? I don't even want to be in a relationship where I feel that I could talk to you like you're, you know, or disrespect you. I want to, like, look at the guy I'm with. Like, I respect him. I love him. Like, you know, like, unconditional. And it's like we're a team and we're like, you know? Yeah. Now, so you talked a little bit about, I want to get back on um, the, just a, a few of these questions are super great. Sure. What, who do you feel was um, your biggest, like, intimate relationship growing up that you had not sexual but intimate could have been sexual too but and how did it like how did it profoundly affect your life 
could be a, a family member, a mentor, a lover, or, or did do you have one that you feel was? Um, like who was it? Yeah. Like for instance, you know, like for me, one of, one of the most intimate relationships is, um, the person who got me out of the life. He sent me to a Tantra school and he's a doctor and I didn't know him, but we're still close today. He just believed in me when I didn't believe in myself even. And to this day, he's, I put him in my Ted talk and all these things because he really like connected with me and it wasn't sexual, it was intimate. So like, I feel like most people have one person, even if they didn't have a good parent, that was like an intimate connection that was profound in their life. Well, I actually had one good guy in my life that I kind of like, I fucked up. So what happened it. with that? And when, when was this? So I met him when I was like, in, we like grew up in the same neighborhood. I'm from New York, so from Brooklyn. Okay. Yeah. So I hear the accent coming out a little bit yeah. here and there. I've been, I've been here for a while, so I kind of lost it. But yeah, so we like knew each other from the neighborhood and we started like talking when I was like 16 and we dated till I was like 28 on and off, but I was here and he was he was there but he always like was the person who was always there for me no matter what like even if I'm wrong even if I'm right even if I'm like uh like he always like had my back like he paid my rent for three years out here and he didn't even I didn't even see him like I saw him twice a year and he would like I didn't have any money and he he's like I know this is your dream to be out there and I'm just gonna support you and he literally like paid my rent for three years wow yeah and like, anytime I wanted to start a business, he would, like, look up the business and, like, then give me pointers and, like, tell me, oh, you need to do this, you need to do that. Like, mm. I had a doggy daycare mm -hmm. in Brooklyn, my first, one of my first businesses that I opened. <laughs> I always opened businesses. I see that. like, a young age. And he would, like, stay up all night painting the place, putting the floors down. Like, building. he just believed in you and supported you. Yeah, he you. always believed in me. And, and what happened? Me. So... When I was, I moved here when I was 26 and around when I was like 28, he told me he wanted to move out here and get married and it just scared me, mm -hmm. which, you know, like, like I said, I, it was a mistake, but it it scared me because I was like, oh, I want to have fun. You know what I mean? I You're in LA now. You want to have fun. Yeah, You're finally here. Right. I'm in LA. I want to have fun. He said something to me that he was like, I just want you in a bikini by the pool, like drinking margaritas and just chilling, being feminine, doing yeah. your thing. And I was like, what? I don't want to do that. I want to work like in my mm. mind. You know what I mean? Where do you, do you, so do you think that that's a great, that's a great like point right there. And I want you to think for a minute. Like if you can go back to that 26, 27 year old thought, where do you think that thought came from? What did I want to work? Yeah. That you didn't want to, because now you're saying you want love, I'm not saying that you necessarily don't want to work because you're very entrepreneurial, but you just want someone to love you. And it sounds like that's what he wanted to do. Yeah, he, he where did. do you think that thought came from? Like, I just didn't think he was going to accept me like of what I just I wasn't ready to settle down. You know what I mean? I just wasn't ready to just sit by a bikini and have, like, a guy take care of me. You know? I was like... Because taking care of me feels to me like controlling me. Yeah. You know what I mean? So if you're taking care of me and I'm, now I'm relying on your money, what happens when you're, you're... I piss you off? What happens if I don't... If I don't feel so like that I didn't feel to secure to yeah. you? It doesn't... It still doesn't feel It still secure. doesn't feel secure to you. And I, you're not alone. And you're speaking to most women. Yeah. Most women, but you're ahead of most women in the sense where you're saying, no, I would surrender to a man if he would like actually show up and, and lead but me I somewhere. I my own money, no matter what. Like I, I would, re let's say retire. Like if a guy told me, look, I want to be with you. I love you. You can't work anymore. Then he would have to give me a significant amount of money in my bank account. So, so I know that if you get, if you one day get an idea that you don't want to be with me anymore and you want to be with this 25 year old model. You're not just going to leave me when I'm 50 with nothing. I understand. That's not going to happen. That's a, and, and I think this is a valid fear that most women have today. And it's why most women are choosing to be single, to be childless, and to focus their energy on their career. And I'm not saying you're not doing that, but in a way you've done it in some respects, but now you're, you're wanting that partner. But it's yeah. that fear of if I surrender and love fully and submit I have no control. Right. And that's scary. It's very scary. And a lot of good men 
will be there and provide. But unfortunately, a lot of men will leave when they find the new play thing. Or if you don't listen to them, right? Well, so stats do show that men, a ninety percent of women file for divorce. So men typically are staying, but the conditions that they're staying right. under, like who knows, the fidelity rates are obviously high. Most marriages end because of that. Domestic violence. One in four women have been in domestic violence relationship, and people. I don't want to really talk about domestic violence, but I'm just saying because of that experience that women go through, it changes the way we deal with men. You know what I mean? Because Understandable. If, if you're in a toxic relationship with a guy who's like scaring you a lot, even if he's not beating you up, but he's like intimidating you, you're now, you don't fully trust men anymore. And I right. feel like a lot of women go through that. One of every four women have had some kind of physical, sexual abuse. So it's a very real thing. Um, I do believe that there are men out there who don't abuse women. I do yeah. believe that too. Yeah, of course. But, um, unfortunately that's not focused on, right? That, that this more is focused on and the fact that women have already suffered this trauma, then it's like, okay, I already have this baggage. I say that, you know, Louis Vuitton luggage, right? They've got a lot of it these days, women, um, physical and emotional baggage. And then they come into a relationship and they already feel some type of way towards men. So it's just hard for them to, to, and I feel like these guys out there that are really present and that would want to provide and be present, sometimes they just get overlooked because women are like, I'm not, I, I'm not going to, I'm not giving up control. And, and I feel like that's the sad part too. I mean, what, what's like the percentage of men who just want to provide and all this like, uh... well, this, this is a lot of studies show that men, they do want to provide and they do want to protect. But how do they treat the women that they're providing for? I mean, you know, just because they provide for you doesn't mean you're happy. It's not enough. That's true. I mean, but, but is it enough the other way too, though? Like on the other end of the spectrum, I think we like being alone and not having a man. I think a lot of women are saying they're happy, but I don't think they are truly because well, innately, I think, I think I'm sorry. To no, no, off. that's okay. I think it's better to be alone than to be with a man who's treating you badly. Because I've been with a man who's treated me badly. I, I have I, as well. I used to pray for God to just get me out of there. Like I've I, been in that situation as well. I understand. I understand very real uh, uh, that uh, that situation is real. I just feel that a lot of times today um, we have these alarming stats that are they're very scary for us to think about, right? Like the um, we have the abuse. We have women um that are divorcing men women aren't staying well, right why are they divorcing men we're not I, I again women but, are divorcing men to take their money there has to be a reason. I think some some i think some some do i i'm not siding with women i'm not siding with men i think it's equal problems um because when you look that there's actually a lot of male domestic violence that that does, no one talks about um even the guy that i just had two two shows before has suffered that and admitted it. And if the cops come, if right now we call the police mm -hmm. and the cops come, Newport Beach Police Department comes, they're taking them just by default, okay. even if we were the abusers. So I think that, yes, we do, men are more powerful, they're stronger, and typically, yes, it's the other way. But we have to acknowledge the fact that there's a lot of women who are also be turning into men more and a lot of characteristics. And they're physically being violent with their men too. To answer your question, why are women leaving? Women are leaving because they think that they can do better and there's better options, I think, a lot of times. You think every marriage that's getting in, ending in divorce that there was some kind of DV or that he wasn't treating the wife well? Yeah. I don't think really? that now that's like sad. 40 or 50 years old is just going to be like, you know, maybe I'll Social media is lying to them today, telling them, like, you run the world, you, you don't need a man, buy this giant dildo go freeze your eggs I mean, but if you're retarded you're gonna listen to social media most right? people are then you're t saying a majority of the women are today beautiful like that's that's the trend you realize that in 10 years there'll be more single unmarried women without children on the planet than any other time in history I that's that. disturbing yeah, right I does that does that's I, I you can't like i don't think you can just fully blame like women or social media like we have to talk about like also the men i i'm saying both sides I, now what are what are men telling women that we they they're telling us that if they if we want them to be with us that they we need to accept them being with other women and it's hard for i understand a woman that 
to fully love a man when when he's telling her to her face that he's going to be with other women. Because I do agree. I when understand you that. Love someone. You we like. we have a chemical bond. Um, right. We have certain chemicals that we feel when we are with someone, and it starts around the first three month period is when we start really getting that, okay, where's this relationship going? And then again, the six month and the nine month, it's like, are we getting married? Yes or no? Because right. that's, that's innately in us so that we bond to our partner, hopefully husband, and we stay with him, right? Because we're going to have his children and then we have that bond with the child, right? Through all the hormones that come when we give birth and through nursing, et cetera. If we didn't have oxytocin and all those feel good hormones, we would kill our babies because it's, it's so hard on us. Like, ups and feedings. And so they make the babies so cute. And with that, those hormones that, that flood to our brains and a healthy mom, that's why a healthy mom will never leave her child unless her chemicals are off, right? She won't. And when you hear moms abandoning their children, you're like, wow, she was effed up here because right. our hormones in our body make that. So it doesn't happen. Same thing with men. Men don't have those hormones. The only way that they stay with a woman is with time. Because they get used to that like energy of that, that female energy, which is very addicted to them because they need that to balance their masculine. Right. But that for men, it's not sex. Sex for men is, is, it's an act, but it is intimate when it's with someone they love. Does that make sense? No, I so the more that. time they spend with us, that's why men don't file for divorces. They're like, damn, I've been with this person. If, if I'm with a guy yeah. and he's cheating me, but I don't know about it. That's better than him coming to me and say, listen, if you want to be with me and you want all these perks that come with me, then you're going to have to accept that I'm going to be with other women. Like, I, you can't tell me that. I understand that, too. I think some women have it. I believe most most all women are in open relationships. They don't know it. That's better. See, for you, it's better. And I think for a lot of women, they would prefer a man to be honest. I think it's down the middle. Mm -hmm. But because I do they don't really love you because nobody wants to hear that from the man they're with. Because I understand we're like territorial too, you know. Yeah. We don't want well. We're sharing all these moments with you, and we love you, and we're like obsessed with you, you know. Because how women are, we don't want to know that you're going to fuck Sally down the street and then to, coming back home to me, and then I'm gonna be like, oh, okay, how was it? To Did me, it's time? to me, it's a little different. For me, I could overlook just the sex if I knew it was just that. Like he went to Vegas bachelor party. They hooked he up. Told you? Um, personally, for me, I would want to know because I'm I'm a Virgo, so my mind's very analytical. I would always be wondering if he didn't answer the phone that time, if he was with someone. That is worse to me. No, so I'd rather him tell me. Would you rather him lie to you? I would no. rather him lie to me. Just lie to me. But the thing is, if it was just sex, I I would be able to get over that. But if it was an emotional well, affair, I couldn't do that. Over. Why do you? Well, because we're all feel that. Wouldn't you rather just? feel like he just loves you and there's no other women that I think that that I mean yeah every one woman wants that but is that realistic today I trust me girl I'm with you I'm not saying that I'm like oh yeah so to me it's worth if a man is just talking and engaging and flirting but I think they do that anyway than having sex I think they're doing that they're doing everything they're doing whatever they want and like long-term emotional affairs without sex to me, that's worse than just having sex. I'd rather him just fuck someone in Vegas and be over. But you think he's going to tell you everything that he's doing? Well, that's my whole point, love. I think everyone is, most women are in open relationships. The men aren't just telling. They're just not telling him. They're sleeping around. So I actually give credit to the guys who are being honest and saying, hey, I'm not saying that it's ideal or that's what I put on my dream board. Right. But I'm just saying, like, we live in a different world today. All you have to do, you don't even have to swipe anymore. You just open your Instagram account. I know, it's terrible. I'm not saying that it's the ideal and it's not something I raise my son, like I would raise my son that way. I'm not raising him that way. Um, he already has a lot of girls on him. And I just tell him, like, don't be bothered with girls now. But, and I had his cards read and stuff and they said, he, he, he's going to be very popular, but he'll get, get married to one woman and be faithful and loyal. And I believe that that does exist. It's just very rare. It's either in the faith-based extreme, like super religious, yeah. then you deal with all that dogma, which most of those men I feel are really effed up because they have so much shame around sex and their urges and desires. Or you deal with this rare guy who was raised that fidel you know, fidelity is next to godliness or next to not even godliness, like the presence of like how a true man is, which how many men are raised that way? No, I feel what you're saying. Do you see what I'm saying? Let me find out about it because I'll tell you.
There you go, guys. Right. So yeah, so it's it's a hard, these are hard conversations, girl. And trust me, I think I, I'm not saying that it's just the man's fault or it's just the women. I think it's both of our faults. Because like you said earlier, here here's a here's the thing, love. We're all sharing the same men. But if women would close their legs, yeah. we wouldn't have the issue. Yeah. Women think by opening their legs, they'll get a man to commit. Well, why do they think that? Because that's been conditioned. Right, so it's not their fault. It's not their fault either. Right, because there's not really any good role models to tell them the right way to do things. And maybe they're Unless it's religious dogma. Right, right, raised by the right parents. Because my personally, my mom didn't teach me how to be a wife. Well, who, say, who does? Maybe there's some mother in, like, Russia or, like, you know... Uh, Less developed know. countries where yeah. that's happening. But, but we're teaching the women how to be good wives. They're preparing femininity them. is not taught today. Right. Relationships, anatomy, sexual, like how to take care of your sexual anatomy, how to to, ple to pleasure yourself, how to like discover your your feminine, central, sexual power. Nobody teaches that. I do, fortunately. They should. They should. But and that's why I do this work because women have so much more power than they even know. Yeah, I don't think women should even have kids if they're not married. Well. Like you and I couldn't be the poster child for that, right? right? Because we both well, are. I can only tell you from experience. Because being yeah. a single mom, it's the hardest thing. It's, it's the hardest thing. Yeah. It really is. And this is not a victim. It's just yeah. like we, you know, we made decisions. No, I just see like there's women who are married. They have like a lot of. They, they just it looks so beautiful, and it's it's beautiful to have another person who loves your child as much as you do. Correct. And the only person who can love them that much is the their other parent. their other parent. And it's good that you love each other too and to show like a loving environment to your child. You know? So, but so in those instances that you see, and a lot of this is again, all we see on social media, right? These beautiful families, these power couples with these kids going to church, right. things like that. How much of that do you think is actually legitimately their lives? Um, probably not all. We never know. Yeah, we yeah. never know. Right. So my, my point is like, I think that we have to adjust our our, when I say standards, people hate that because they got on me for that. When I say you have to lower our standards, I meant like we have to lower the our realistic and unrealistic expectations of what 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 we're going to be able to really get today. I'm not saying don't have that, and yeah, ideally you will find a partner that is going to be faithful to you. But most definitely, it's probably not the one that met, checks all those boxes. It's probably not that because. As we know, he's probably sleeping with a lot of women who all want that same man. Right. So I don't want a man like that. But and there like, you I go. I don't want a man I'm not attracted to either. So it's just hard. I and I That's why I'm alone. I fully understand, and that is real honesty right there. Yeah. That you'd rather be alone than deal with a man that's being shared with a bunch of other women who are all wanting that man to commit to him. Right. It's really stupid when you think about it. If enough women but just then said... They use it against you too. Like, I know. Oh, well, if you don't want to do this, this girl will do it. And, and she, she will. will. No, she definitely and so will. that's the and problem. she'll do more than you. She'll do more because she's like, maybe I can lock him down. Right. And really in the end, you know, he probably doesn't lock down for another whatever 10 years until he's you know, he's gotten another decade older and more successful. And then he goes for none of those girls. He goes for someone 10 oh, years man. younger than, than, than you. I was telling my friend, like guys want younger girls, but then it's like, when you get the younger girl, it might be like a headache. You know what I mean? Yeah. I mean, a lot of the younger girls, it's just the physical and a real man, like a Shiva who's, who's present in his body, who's present with his purpose, with his divine purpose. He's connected to source, to Shiva. He's leading and he wants a woman that will you know, sink into him and follow, he's not going to be moved by like a body, right? you know, cause he's like connected with your soul, with your divine feminine essence. And so it's like, when you find these types of men who honor their divine masculine, it's rare. You got to like hang around and see what's up because those men are the ones that are not going to be moved by age. Right. Like but the men of some guys that, that, but they do say, right. That they don't date girls over 25. Oh, I we're both like, I'm ancient news. Like I'm 40, you know, there are people are like, you're like with some on, on my post, like a viral, they call me a grandma. Really? Oh yeah. And this is to me, it's sick because I look at the feminine different simply because I don't see like the physical. I see more like the, the energy, yeah. the energy of like the divine feminine who's embodied, who's given life, who's nurtured, like who's so connected to her connection with Shiva, like with source, like that is like, you don't, can't find that. You might find a young, hot body, 
but that mind and that spirit and that soul, that's not there. Right. And that's what, that's what really like a man who has a woman who really is there like surrendering, but also nurturing and just like honoring his, his godlike presence is in like, Young girls don't do that. They don't even know like what time of day it is, let alone, you know, they, they're a good lay because they're just young and hot. But so for me, I think it's sad that the red pill has told women that they're too old and that they're like, once you get past, like you said, the twenties, it's like, we're like a grandma. It's like, are you right, serious? Yeah, so this stuff I don't agree with. I do. I'm in the middle. I think women have to kind of at least Can't be a little more realistic. Well. Yes. But also take back their power, close their legs, yeah, close stop their legs. doing it. If, yeah. if we, if women stop effing guys, then it will, it will be like, okay, you're going to have to commit on some level or put more energy into it. And there, it's not going to be this thing, but I don't think that's going to happen. Well, no, maybe someone needs to talk to them. Maybe it will happen one day, but I think women should wait at least 90 days to sleep with a guy because then you'll know if he even cares about you. Because if you, there's some guys, if you tell them that you won't sleep with them on the first night, they won't talk to you. Anymore. They won't, but then you weeded them out. Just right. like I said about yeah. the marriage thing. Right. Um, yeah. I, I mean, that concept, a lot of men don't like that because they feel like, and actually studies show, I just, I, I read studies all the time on studies show that men and women, men will marry a woman who sleeps with them on the first day, on the first day, or even second, those stats just came out. And no, it's not even about that, but you'll know if a guy is serious about you or not, I, if he I, waits for you. I mean, don't yes, but I don't think he will, because like you said, the next girl will give it to him. Yeah, but it's not about sex though. No, if a guy's really serious about you and wants something long term. to get to know you. I've had guys that I told them like, because re recently I told yeah. you I'm not really like, you're just like off that. Yeah. So I, every guy who's trying to talk to me, I, I kind of tell him like, I take it slow. Like mm -hmm. if you want to get to know me, then get to know me. Like I'm not having sex with you. No, right? again, you set your, you set your standard, you put your boundaries down and then. I wish I would have did that 15 years ago. Correct. And now they can take it or leave it. Right. And so you're going to get a different result, of course. But I think the problem is when these girls think, oh, I'm going to power trip this guy. I'm going to, I'm not, I'm not going to sleep with him, but they're secretly sleeping with other guys in their repertoire. And then. This guy's like, well, I'm not going to wait on her. I'm just going to go find someone in my Rolodex that one of my rotation. And then just looking to anyway. There you go. Right. So, so if you put the standard down, then yeah, I, I think there is a certain man that would um, be okay with that. But men, we know men can't live without sex. Yeah, not forever. I'm just saying if the guy's serious about you, just get to know him a little bit before yeah, you fuck him. once you fuck him, now you're like in love with him and you're confused. Of course. I, I agree. It's with that bonding hormone. We right. talked about that. And it happens very quickly for women. One good orgasm, it's over. And so men need to be um, conscientious of that. Like, it's a high responsibility. No, they're not, gonna they're not going to. Like, right. when you sleep with a girl like this and you give her orgasms they over and they're addicted they to want, you. They want the control. They want a girl to be addicted to them. So they but then they're also her. the first ones to say, oh, you're crazy. And it's like, well, you're a part of that craziness, darling. Right. You know? So men do need to be more respectful in that, in that light where they need to be honest with a woman straight up and just say, hey, I'm only in this. I want to date casually, meaning I'm going to sleep with other women. I know you don't like that. But I at least can respect a man who says it. Then I could decide, ah, I don't want to fuck with you. Right. So I think it's about more vulnerability and transparency. And that's... I don't think men are that honest, though. Well, they feel like they can't be because if they do, then women are not going to stay around. But right? you just said there are women that are going to stay around. Is it men, you mean? There will be. No, there's women that stay around no matter what. Oh, well, yeah, because they're just like whatever they're grasping for straws, like whatever I can get because they know, you know, they bought into the whole thing that they're one of many. So, you know, for me, it's like, I do think that, um, that there's a difference between having standards and saying, this is what I want for a man and expressing those, but also coming to the table saying, and here's what I'm bringing for you. Uh, I'm going to, you know, be this, I'm going to bring you peace. I'm going to be submissive. I'm going to be surrendered in the respects that I can and I think as long as you have a realistic, like, what are you bringing to the table that's attractive to a man, then I don't think there's anything wrong with having that higher standards. Higher standards mean you perform higher. So me, I like people say like, oh, high maintenance women. I am high maintenance. I've never been taken to a fast food place on a first day. I would never allow that. I would love that. To go to fast food? Yes. 
Well, then, that, then that's your thing. For me, right. I'm a single mom. If I'm going out and, get, and I'm choosing a night away from my son in my work, which takes care of my son, I want to go to a place that has five stars or a white tablecloth so that I know that I'm eating good and that's just what I like. I'm high maintenance, but I'm also high performance. Meaning if you're my man, you're not lacking for anything. Sexually, I'm surrendered, I'm submissive, I'm supportive, meaning like you're you're leading, I'm following. So high, high maintenance, high performance. Yeah. And that's what, it, I think it's just about being honest and asking that. And yeah, I don't think what you're asking for is unrealistic. I just think it, in, in Los Angeles, this place is very superficial. So you're, yeah. you're looking for these guys that I'm are not even looking out. Here. Yeah. I'm, I'm like gave up on looking. Well, I mean, sometimes the it's best that it comes when you give up, cause there's no energy attached to it. It comes, it comes. So, and we've had like a lot of these things were not in there, but I think it's really good as a woman living in a modern feminist society. What's one thing you wish you could admit to like, like to the opposite sex? To the opposite sex? Yeah. Or just one thing you wish you could admit, just period, that you wouldn't be wouldn't, stigmatized I for saying. I consider myself a feminist. I'm not saying you are. No, I'm no, saying I'm we... Saying, I'm, oh, that, that's what you would out. say. No, I mean, like, what would I... What would okay, I so I'm not saying you're a feminist at all. I'm saying we live in a modern feminist society. Yeah. Thousand percent. Okay. What is something that you wish that you could admit or say or act and not be stigmatized because this is a feminist world we live in so first of all i don't even care if i'm stigmatized i think feminism is kind of bullshit i'm here for like you know women empowerment i don't think women are less than men but i think they're just they've taken it a little bit too far okay okay i i'll say whatever i don't yeah what anyone thinks about okay i I like that um how often do you feel unseen as a woman unseen as a woman like like as a woman do you feel like you're unseen i mean when i want to be seen then i'm seen okay so you don't ever feel like you're not seen as a woman no i mean i'm not like i'm more of like i hide myself okay i'm not really out there like so you don't yeah okay all right good to know um how often do you feel unsafe or do you ever feel unsafe as a woman yeah you do i've I've recent recently um like, I just think all women feel unsafe. I mean, I was in Turkey, right? And, like, the, the driver took me to, like, some weird alley. I was scared. You know what I mean? Like, yeah. I was by, by myself. And then the guy told me, like, oh, don't walk by yourself. I mean, like, situations like that, you, you, you know, do women feel are scared. You know, if you're in an area you don't know and you're walking by yourself or if you just even, like, look at social media and the news and all the things that are going on in the world, like, just random shootings, I feel like a lot of women feel, feel unsafe. unsafe and vulnerable. Yeah, that's why I've always had, like, big dogs. Like, I always, my last dog was a Mastiff. Like, I always had... Oh, wow. Yeah, huge Yeah, you're not playing. Because I like to feel, like, safe. And without the dog, I feel naked. I understand. You know what I mean? Yeah, I think... I know he'll kill for me. uh, Absolutely. Yeah. Um, How often, or when, I guess you're not in a relationship, but, like, as a woman, do you feel unloved? Unloved. Um, I don't think I give enough love to be like, to get it back. Mm. You know, I I think that I hoard my love because when I love, I love so hard and I I get so like, I'm so sensitive and I get so hurt when I'm not like the love isn't being reciprocated. So I kind of retreat, you know Mm. what I mean? So, so you withhold some of your love, right? Okay. Yeah. That, I mean, that makes sense. It's again about being vulnerable and feeling like if, if I give up control, then I lose or yeah, I'm going to get hurt. I'm not usually like the vulnerable one. Okay. I mean, it's hard for me to get there. So I understand. What would it take for you to get there with a guy? A lot. Like, I don't even think a guy would, I mean, I'm not saying I don't think a guy would do it or I'm not worth it. I just feel like all of my trauma has just made me like hard. You know? And, and I think this is interesting and I want to stop this right here and just make this point. And this is nothing against you or your trauma because I've been there and I understand and it's painful and I've done a lot of work to be on the other side of that and not be a victim. But I want to, because for me, I'm never pointing the finger at the man or the woman. It's, I'm always equal. I'm like both parties. Right. So 
as a woman who you said I have all this trauma and I heart I'm hardened I don't I withhold my love and I'm and I'm not even acting like I'm a victim it's just that my you know when you experience certain things it I, just changes you as a person oh I understand you know I mean? I'm not saying that you're a victim at all I'm saying that we come to a man half empty and then we wonder why we don't get filled up fully like we come to him already broken we come and not broken and then they broken us and yeah. and that as well but for the next guy he has no bearing on the trauma and the shit that happened from the previous guy. That's all I'm saying. We're I'm saying it's human and, and of, all of course, us have darling. Human experiences. So even if you're a man or you're a woman, we all, with age, we have our own experiences, and that molds us as a human. Forget about gender. You know what I mean? So I well, think that I, if a guy goes to the army and he has PTSD, so now you're saying, oh, he's no good because now you have. I'm to not. Be- Oh, I'm not no, saying that. Yeah, to yeah. To Sai or whoever. Oh, well, if you've been through all this stuff, then now you're just half empty or you're this or you're... No, I'm just a human and I've I've learned how to keep myself safe because I've been in situations where I didn't keep myself safe and now I'm just more protective of myself. A thousand percent. And these are real situations. People come back from war, change, yeah. PTSD. Yeah. So I'm not knocking any of that. I'm just saying that we have to stop blaming men that didn't cause the trauma for coming into a relationship with a woman who comes in with a Louis Vuitton baggage full of trauma and then be like, uh, what's, you know, like there, there's no, no good men in the world. No, that that's, that's and same thing with a woman. If a woman treated a man a certain type of way, when he come back from war and was acting all like sketchy and weird and pe- and she's like, what's wrong with you? That's, I would say the same thing to her. You don't see that as much because women are naturally more nurturing and more we want, we want to help. We love more. We are more connected to our emotions than men. Yeah. So that's my only thing is that unfortunately women are coming into relationships already pretty fucked up. And then we want to blame men for not being able to be but with a woman, fucked up. but that man did not the men that you're in the relationship know, with but, now. But I, Hyperbole. I, I, Do you understand what I'm saying? I feel like there a lot of men are fucked up. Like I'm there I'm not saying there are no good men. No. There are some good Obviously. Men, and I've met some amazing men. But I just feel like if if men did a better job in treating women a little bit better, a little bit nicer, and stop making us feel like we're just like fucking Just a, a body up, or a box. Yeah, like, oh, I agree with that. Oh, with your you know, like oh if you're past twenty five you're just no good anymore. Like what, what like, kind of shit is that? Like, I don't I trust me, I disagree with that as well. I also say that for an older a woman is, the more conscientious she needs to be about having her P's and Q's in order because men are superficial and we'll go find a 25 year old. And women hate me for saying that, for I'm saying the wall is real. It doesn't mean I agree with it or that I think women should be treated less than. I'm just like, women, if we're gonna play in the game, play in the game. These guys are going for younger women who are kind of bimbos. They're just hot bodies or hot holes so know that and be more embodied, be more feminine. Don't give them room. And yes, some guys are just dicks and they're going to cheat. We're not talking about them. Men are pretty simple though. If you feed them, if you feed them, you give them peace and you freaking let them know you're the man. Like when they come home and bring the bacon, you're like, honey, you're the man. A man is not going to leave you. And if he does, that's the, he just was going to cheat anyway. Some men just cheat. Right. No matter, they could have the baddest bitch who serves them, yeah. gives them blowjobs, does everything, Most gives them peace. Cheat, right? Most men cheat. A lot, a lot of them do. Right. I think it's bad for us to say all oh, for the ones no, that are like they're faithful. You know, yeah. these poor guys are like, damn, I'm here with my wife and I'm five kids. Saying, I'm not cheating. I'm just saying, be respectful about it. You know. What I mean? understand. I understand. And this is a real, real conversation from real women who have, you know, been in the dating world. We understand. We have kids. It's just, it's, yeah. So, um, okay. I think you're pretty much so you're like honest. You're not going to hold anything back um, with guys. What is something, um, uh, last question, and then I want to talk about, um, yeah, no, I'm going to do this. What do you think is a a misconception about you or your life or your business, anything? Um, I'm not really out there like that. Okay. Other guys, so I just like, I just started to to get out there. Okay. To do this because I told you I'm, I'm yeah. going to go into podcasting. But, or just in general. Um, what do you think people feel about you that maybe isn't I, true? I think, like, let's say comments on Instagram. Oh, like, you've never worked a day in your life. You know what I mean? That's like the first You're like, I had a dog business when I was 17. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I mean, I've been working since I'm. You're a hard so. worker, I can tell. Yeah. Like, what do you think as the mask you have to wear in the world to protect yourself or to just be. 
Um, to be accepted. I don't think I'm accepted. Mm. You know what I mean? Why? I don't, I don't, I don't feel accepted, I, but I'm not even around enough people to even feel unaccepted. Why do you feel that you're not though? Cause that's a very strong statement. Because I am not like going to go with the flow. Okay. You know what I mean? Like I'm not. That's very, that's a feminine energy to go with the flow. Yeah, no, I'm yeah. not going with the flow. I mean, I'm going to go with the flow like the first couple of times. I'm just going to see, observe, and then I'm just not going with the flow anymore. Okay. So it's like if you're, let's say, a high status person and you're inviting me out um, and you think I should just be happy to be in the room with you, like that's not working for me. I okay. Guess. And that's situations I've been in multiple times. Like, oh, just come. I'm like, for what? Like, I'll go the first few times, I'll check it out. But if you're not giving me attention and I'm just, like, in the room as a Because women want to be seen. Right. They want to feel safe and they want to be loved. Right. So if, if so I don't feel like that, then I'm just then you're not, not gonna, showing up. You're you opting know? out. Yeah. Yeah. I understand. And then that's when they're going to call the 22-year-old who will be like, right. okay. And that's, and, that's cool. and that's fine. All right. So last two questions. Um, what is the next phase of your life? What's that going to look like for you? Um, I'm hoping... Uh, I just want to like master myself. As okay. A human. So like I, I love went that. to Bali and I kind of got a little bit spiritual. good. Good. And um, I kind of felt like okay, I need to just become the best version of myself. So I want to like make enough money to sustain myself and become the best version as, of myself as I can. Okay. You know what I mean? Like get in, in better shape and take care of myself, take care of myself, work on my mental health, stuff like that. And yeah, like as far as men, I do, I'm not saying I hate men and I don't want a man. I would love a man, but it, I just feel like what I want maybe is just like hard to attain because maybe my expectations are like too much, you know? Yeah, I but understand. I don't want to settle. That's a very real, that's a very real thing to say. Yeah. At least you're admitting that. Yeah. And my expectation, like I said, it's not really a look thing or like. You have to have these tons of money or well, whatever. It's just how you treat me. Yeah. That's what I And do. I think I those things are very well. realistic. Yeah. And if you make that clear and you continue working, you know, on yourself in that feminine energy, I think right. that you'll get that. Um, for sure. I believe you will. Do you have, do you have any regrets in life? No. No. Okay. I didn't think you did. And then last, last advice, cause we always want to, you know, help others and you know, the reason for living is giving, right? Absolutely. So what would you say, what advice would you offer to a young woman um, who was in your shoes where you came from? You, you didn't talk a lot about your struggles, but you said you had unpleasant child things. Um, right. Who was there but wants to get where you are now or where you've been? What advice would you give to them? Um, I would say... Um, close your legs. Okay. I would say no. My advice, really, to women is seriously, don't have kids unless you're happily married. Like that. I mean, that's not really helping you get to where I am. But well, it could save them some heartache, I mean, right, yeah, along think, the way. I think that, like, with social media and stuff, people are like baby mama, baby daddy. Yeah. Make it. They kind of. They make it glorified. This, that's right. And I'm just like, hell no, 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 no it's no. not. This is not it. Like, nope. we need like this ain't classes it, right? yeah. where we are taking women and putting them in like some type of mommy boot camp to show them what life for is like really a month. Like. Yes. Nonstop. No, seriously. Correct. Because so I didn't know. I've never even changed a diaper. So when I got pregnant. I was like, oh, I could do this shit. Like, how hard could it be? I'll just get a nanny. No. No. Yeah, no, no. Even with a nanny, even with help, it's, it's, you're so you alone need, at night. No, you need, you need the, both parents. You need to be married. You need to be happy. So mm -hmm. I would say, like, don't think I that, love this advice. Yeah, don't it's great. think that it's... It's so ladies, keep your legs closed, but also learn the traits of being feminine. Um, yeah. Get in one of my masterminds. We teach all the char characteristics of femininity so that you can become more feminine because men love the feminine energy. And yeah, yeah. it's awesome having you here. You were so vulnerable yeah. and real and that's intoxicating delicious. I'm sure you're going to get a ton of DMs after this oh, from guys who are so like, much. I want to be there for you, boo. Oh. Um, yeah, let me give you a hug. I'm so proud of you. It's such an honor to have another strong yeah, thank mother. Thank you so much yes, for we'll, having me. Absolutely. We'll do this, this again. This is my first podcast. Oh, yay. Yeah. You, you killed it. Thank you so much. All right, beautiful.
If you're still watching, that means you're thoroughly enjoying this content. So please like, subscribe, and turn on your notifications as I'm putting new content out every Sunday and so much more throughout the week. Also, I know you're dying to attend my Intimacy Master Retreat, so hit us up. We're going to take care of you. Lastly, I'm taking applications for women who are dying to get into my mastermind program. And if you're a man or a woman and you have some sex or relationship challenges, I want to work with you, boo. Thanks so much. Lots of love.